good enough? All right, I can't tell, though. I got a steel piece up here. That's all the light. All right, that's the law of labor. In the most holy name of Almighty God and Allah, who came to us in the person of Masterful Lord Muhammad, the great Mahdi, who was to come and has come to restore we who are lost from our own kingdom of Islam and to destroy those that have destroyed us. God, our God, all our will, our people. Deliver us from the murders and to serve the baby all the days of our lives and to teach our children to submit to thee through that unequal love and mercy for God. And thanks, thanks to you, O Allah, for making manifest to us our enemy, the devil, to help us, O Allah, to live the life that the death of a Muslim, I bear with us no God but thee. I bear with the most honorable, humble, last and humble, the last and greatest apostle. Thank you, Allah, for this day. Thank you for the life that you're teaching the most honorable, humble, the last and humble. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray, Allah, that you remove the heart of the devil from me as well as the black nation. We pray for freedom. Justice and equality, knowledge, understanding, power to become a force on our planet and in our universe again. So I'm just grateful for this day, another opportunity to take in a breath of life. So assalamu alaikum, black family. Pot peace at you again tonight. Been about a week, two maybe, since I've been at you. And my last two previous podcasts, this whole family, black man, black woman, black child. And what I want to do tonight, I want to wrap it up. That black experience as it relates to our parenting of our children. And the thing that we bring into our family, our relationships, and our children, and all the energy that we carry, all the trauma that we carry in life, and how we, a lot of times, we'll pass that on. to our children and how a lot of this transfers in the way we start to parent and raise our children from what we take from our parents. So we're going to see if we can uh, eliminate some of these things tonight because we, in, as it relates to that black experience, we carry a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot of baggage. We just keep transferring from one generation to the next. But I'm going to give you these keys. Pop P is going to give you some keys tonight. Give you something that we can work with. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm not going to even waste no time with this. I think this subject is very, very, very important for us. And everybody should be able to relate to it, man, woman, and child. To be quite frankly, especially in the time we living in with all this great chaos that we've been placed in, the confusion of the minds of men, those in government, those in politics, and a lot of people that we stand next to, we live next door to in our communities, so-called communities, we like using that word. But do we really have a community of people? Something that we can call our own, or we can go to our own brother, our own sister, shopping center. We need health care. We can go to people that look like us and have our best interests at hand, living in the belly of the beast. 
black man, woman in America. But we come through this. If we can pull ourselves up out the belly of the beast and get on the square and start to strive and quit letting this world beat us down, we better than this all the way. And I'm going to jump right in tonight. I'm not going to play around with this. But all praise is due to Allah. He came to us in the person of Master for Allah, Muhammad the Mahdi. And his last and greatest message, the most honorable and humble, Elijah Muhammad. One of the greatest men that has ever been produced. Under Elijah Muhammad, was brought from a dead state to a God state, right in front of your eyes. Produce all these great men and women that you see in the nation today and in the past. Well, I'm going to jump right into my tidbits tonight. I hope you all in because I'm not waiting. I always like to throw my tidbits out there, the bits of information. And the first thing we got to start to do, black folks, is we got to liberate ourselves. It says, free yourself from becoming a, free yourself by becoming a student of truth. Learn to speak the truth. Regardless, question everything you're told. Because every damn thing you've been told has been wrong. 99.9%. It says free yourself from negative self-talk. Putting all that negative, talk to yourself, but it ain't nothing but negative language, negative vibration, negative energy that we produce. It's very, very dangerous because what we do, we transfer that to our children. It says free yourself from guilt and shame. Quit carrying around all that guilt and all that shame. Take responsibility for your own unfolding to reveal the truth of who you are. We got to go into ourselves now, black people. It's that time that we're living in. It says, learn to love, trust, have confidence, and knowledge must reside in you. Learn to, to appreciate the good in one's life. Experience. Always look for the good. Look for the good in yourself and your brother and your sister. If the good outweigh the bad, let's roll with it. We always looking for fault. We never talk about the good that we produce and that resides in us. We talk about all the pain, all the trauma, all the bad. What about the good? Stop letting your fears decide what you will and will not do. We don't really fear the unknown. We fear what we think we know about the unknown. Fear is just a thought in the mind of any human being as it relates to the future. It hasn't even arrived yet. Only in your mind did you produce this type of reality. But you really don't know you don't know. It's just a thought in the mind it says, life doesn't get better by chance. You must get better if you want your life to change. We want our condition in America to change. We want our future to be more brighter and more fulfilling. You must get better if you want your life to change. If 
we want our condition in America, that means we have to improve ourselves. The way we do business in America, the way we treat one another in America, the way we raise our children in America, the way we develop our relationships with one another, with our wives and our women, we have to change. You must program yourself to operate in a way that gets you what you want. Change is necessary, black people. You can't stay the same. It says emotional pain can feel as strong as physical pain since both activate the same part of the brain. But often our emotional pain feels much worse and is harder to heal. I hear this all the time from the black nation, in particular, our woman. We fight to not be at peace with the things out of our control. Peace is the key. We focus on the things from the past that we can no longer manage instead of what we can do now to create the future. Let's create our own future. Quit waiting on white folks to create a future for us. Quit waiting on white folks where we had set the less than two evils. There is evil is evil. There's no less. It says, the way you deal with your pain is the key to not be confined by it. Use your pain to motivate yourself. Black people, black man, black woman. You see so much pain being carried around by our people. You see it in them. You see the results. When people start to break, people start to go down. People become depressed, oppressed, schizophrenic, bipolar. Because you carried all that pain around and you never were taught how to deal with it. At all by your parents. That's why this subject to me is very, very important because this subject is going to teach you how to deal with all of these things and not transfer all that energy into your seed. But I'm moving right along with this tonight. And this is this subject here is about parenting. It says, every interaction with our children is a reflection of our own relationship with ourselves. And this is by Sister Dr. Shefali Sabari. I think it's a very, very beautiful subject that put the sister put together. But listen to this though. Listen well. There's a lot in here. And I'm gonna do the best to disseminate it and break it down and give it to you, but all you really got to do is listen. They said, our children can be our greatest mirrors because they reflect back to us an aspect of ourselves we might not otherwise see. They exhibit their interpretation of the conditions, beliefs that we instill in them. Parenting doesn't come with instructions. That is so correct. But once we have children, we act as if we know exactly what we're doing. As if somehow we become wise at the moment the universe sent these beings to us. As parents, we seem to know what our children need, but in reality, we still haven't figured out what we need. Think about that. Give me one second. Let me find this information here. that I want to give you before I go 
deeper into this subject today. It says, now listen to this, we're innocent when we're born. Before we're taught about the world, we are free. Free from doubt, free from judgment, shame, expectations, and knowledge. Free to express our emotions unfiltered because we have no concept of the rules as a child, as a baby coming into this world, in which we will be which we will be trained to live by. Listen. Teach your children to work through pain. The reason you don't teach it is because you haven't learned to work through your own pain. We all, we have all the answers for our children, but none for ourselves, parents. Listen, we may teach our children about the world, but our children teach us more about ourselves than anyone else. Becoming a mother. Listen, this is what's going on in our community. Becoming a mother and an adult at the same time. I know many of you all can relate to this. You became a mother and a father, really. And an adult at the same damn time. At age 15, 18, or 16, or 17, or 18, you barely understood who you are. You barely understand who you are let alone what kind of life one wants for themselves. When we have children at a very, very early age and you don't even know who you are, you have no understanding on life, you haven't even reached adulthood at all, then suddenly, then suddenly you are responsible for leading the direction of another person's life. This is the conundrum that we're in right now. This is why we're producing children that's going astray. It says, so much of who we are and how we show up in the world stems from the seeds that were planted and nurtured during our own childhood. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I'm talking about tonight. Who we are as parents to go through always shows up in their character. It said behaviors aren't created, they're learned and adopted based on one's perception. Perception was different from everyone, for everyone, and the way you react based on what you perceive makes up your personality. And I'm going to give you an example, but I'm going to read through the book a little bit first. He said, we have all the answers for our children and none for ourselves. We can be arrogant about our parenting style even when we don't really know what we're doing. We take offense 
if someone questions our parenting methods. We honestly believe that because our children come from us, we can do whatever we want with them. Our children become part of the things we own. Listen. And because we take care of them, we expect our children to behave in ways that sometimes we don't even exhibit by themselves. We want our children to do what we believe we can and assist us with completing our unmet legacies. See it all the damn time. I see brothers be out there, you went to college, played football. They got the sons out there getting busted up. He might not even want to be into that, but he's going to follow the instruction of his father. Through the bond with our children, we learn the most about power in relationships. We think we have control over the people we're trying to mold. Listen. But if we don't resist who they say they are, then they will teach us a lesson. We don't have power over any being. All the beings that we bring into this planet belong to a Lord. My children, when they were born, especially the one that I brought up with my own hand, was gifted immediately back to a law. And then you can see the difference. It says, we don't have power over any being on earth. We may teach our children about the world, but our children teach us more about ourselves than anyone else if we're paying attention. Parents, tap into this knowledge tonight. We set up our children with the same expectations we got set up with about the way the world works. We pass down the same fairy tales, rabbit lay eggs. You got this cracker coming down your chimney in a few days. Talking about some rain days. Y'all just got through with Halloween. You have St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day. Running around here trying to scramble to get some eggs that a so-called rabbit laid. Look at these things that we put into the minds of our children. And build up the same anticipation for them to to become this idea person that we never became. Now as your children, they are responsible for matching the fantasy and our expectation of who you want to be. We have higher hopes for our children than we do for ourselves. We want them to push through limits we have not pushed through. We expect so much from them because we're afraid they'll repeat the same mistake we made. Plus, we don't want them to make us look bad because whatever they make of their life reflects on us. We're in fear of repeating the same mistake we believe our parents made, and how can we not be? Surely, if we are operating unconsciously, we will recreate the same conditioned parents, conditioned patterns that were molded within us. It says, listen to this, I always knew my life and my choices would influence my daughter. This is the parent speaking. But I didn't realize just how much of my unresolved issues were interfering with the way I wanted to parent. Raising a child is such, so much more than meets the eye. It's the clearest mirror we will ever have that allows us to see our unconscious behavior. Once we awaken to the deep rooted conditioning of our own past and the awareness of our open wounds, we can react to our children and break the chains of the unconscious patterns that are deeply embedded in us. Listen. To set our children free, we must first set ourselves free from our own baggage. This is what we got to tackle, black family. We got to tackle that baggage that we carry and put on our babies. Listen. It says, my mother yelled a lot, but she didn't spank me. I decided I would yell less, but spank my daughter. 
I started with lightly hitting her hand when she tried to touch the wrong thing. The smacking on the hand was the popping on the butt, which then became full-blown spankings. I didn't have a better method for teaching my children what not to do, so I did what I believe would work, inflict pain to restore order. Since her mother did a lot of yelling, she said, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to tap that hand. But it progressed. And I'm going to tell you why it progressed. It says, I did this until she was about three years old. One day, I asked her to sit in her room so I could go to my room and sulk about the long day I had had. After sending her up with snacks, toys, and the television, tune into her favorite channel. I believed I deserved some peace and quiet. A few minutes later, my daughter came knocking on my bedroom door. She asked if she could come in the room. I didn't want to be bothered, so I nicely said I was sleeping and asked if she would please go back to her room and watch her favorite show. She walked away, and a minute later, I started to feel bad for the way I dismissed her. He said, I got up and went to her room to check on her. And when I went to her room to check on her, I walked in, she was standing on her bed, crayon in hand, scribbling all over the wall. I was a spanker. So I ran right over and spanked her butt, repeatedly asking her why she would do such a thing. My hand was burning, and I noticed that I was so upset. Listen, parents. I was hitting her harder than I ever hit her before. I realized in that moment that I was hitting her not just because of the anger I felt for what she had done, but also because I needed to let out my frustrations about myself. And I've seen this done so many times. And many of us have been guilty of that same action. He said, I realized in that moment I was hitting her not just because of the anger I felt for what she had done, but also because I needed to let out my frustration about myself. She was a three-year-old child begging for my attention. And I refused to be present with her because I preferred to talk about the past. Listen. Then when she forced me to give her my attention by doing something bad, which I probably conditioned her to think was the quickest way to get my attention. Listen, I reacted by redirect right, redirect right, excuse me, by I reacted by redirecting all my pain and releasing it on her body. I was so ashamed that we cried together. It says. I knew my action would influence my child. But in the beginning, I wasn't even close to being mentally prepared for my new position as a parent. Without direction, I suffered to a deep depression. I lacked the coping skill needed to heal the pain. And this prevented, prevented me from being present with my child. This is the problem we got in the home. We sitting up in the home depressed. Carrying all this pain, but we're taking it out on our babies. We want our children to grow up to be just like us. Sometimes we have the children too young. It's a hell of a thing. Become a mother and an adult at the same damn time when you don't know anything about life. Your parents put things on you that weren't correct, then you're carry that same trouble. You might not do the same thing, but you're going to carry that trouble into your child. We don't have time for our babies. But we lay down and we have them. We want to let the TV become the mother or the entertainer while we're sitting in the room and go through all our trauma and our pain. But we got a bean, a little child, wants the attention of the parent, 
and we chastise them for doing something that we really cause ourselves. Trying to get our attention. They do something we say is not correct and we go and spank them or mistreat them because we carry around too much damn pain ourselves. We got to eliminate that. If we want a better world, if we want this devil off our back, we got to change. Understand? We got to go on the inside. Understand? And cut that pain out. It ain't doing you a bit of damn good. And it directly affects those around you that we say we love. But I ain't finished. It said, I was completely caught up in my own thoughts, suffering from the past and having a hopeless vision of, of a stressful future. They ain't got no man in the house. At the time, I believed that loving her and attending to her physical needs were all I needed to do. And I think many parents feel this way. Even parents with the best intention can get distracted with the many demands of life. Parents are flustered from organizing a constructive environment and often can't ignore the emotional needs of their children. They blame their children's bad behavior or personality defects instead of acknowledging their children's attention-seeking behavior. Hey, baby, gonna have a going to have a person Family defect to hell. They do have one because they got it from you. They weren't born that way. They were born free. Were they not? They said, I've been a mother about the same time I've been an adult. Having given birth to my daughter at age 18, I play a role in a largely, largely frowned upon group of single, unwed teenage mothers. Many other women share my traumatic story of becoming an adult and a mother at the same time. And although I can only speak for myself, I am sure this struggle will ring true for many people. At 18, I barely understood who I was, let alone what kind of life I wanted for myself. Then suddenly, I was responsible for leading the direction of another person's life. A life about which I had so many unanswered questions and so many unresolved issues. Listen. So much of who we are and how we show up in the world stem from the seeds that were planted and nurtured during our childhood. What we go through and what we put on our children through always, though always, shows up in their character. We're developing these flaws. We can produce the good, the bad, and the ugly through the way we parent and perceive our children. You don't need to have an adult children to see the results of this cycle. Your children will show signs of their conditioned behavior before they even begin to talk. Pay attention to your children. Your children will show signs of their conditioned behavior before they even begin to talk. Psychologists have always debated whether genetic factors or environmental factors play a bigger role in human development. But I believe our environmental factors are far more influential to the structure of how we decide our behavior. When someone achieves tremendous academic success, did that person do so because of genetic previous disposition? to be successful. Behaviors aren't magically created. Behaviors aren't magically created. They are learned and adopted based on one's perception. Perception will differ from for everyone. And the way you react based on what you perceive makes up your personality. If you put two people, even siblings, in the same environment, this they will act differently because they each perceive what they learn in a different way and accept. A girl may say, my mom yelled a lot and I yelled a lot too. And I yelled a lot based on the fact that mama yelled. But my brother, though, has always been quiet. He keeps to himself. 
I guess you could say I was more like my mom. However, both children had learned behavior for the, from the experience of their mothers yelling, the way they interpret what they learn and how they decide. To respond will be based on the rules in their individual books. The girl may believe one thing, so she makes a rule and behaves in a way that's based on what she sees her mother do. The boy may believe another thing, so he makes a rule and then behaves accordingly. He just stay out the way. He just stay quiet, more introverts. You understand? Because he don't want to be involved in all this constant yelling. Mama yelling, my sister yelling. So I'm just going to fall back, stay quiet, be to myself. You understand? These are the things that we inadvertently put on our children. He said, we recreate parenting skills based on the beliefs we agree or disagree with during our childhood. If your parents did some stuff that you didn't agree with, then you change your whole dynamics as it relates to your children. Our parents influence us to, to want to be like them or to not want to be like them. They are the first person people we learn from. We use their blueprint as reference for the way we should be in life. We have made our own blueprints based on what we experience with them. Listen, what we gain from our parents has little to do with whether we believe we love or despise them. They have a major influence on who we become and who we believe we are. Parents, correct the parent, parenting is, is so important to developing a strong family, Ultimately, a black nation. No matter what you teach your children or expose them to, there's no way to determine how they'll respond. That's not to say that you shouldn't do your best to expose your children to as much knowledge as possible because you should be doing exactly that. But remember, each of your children is a unique being. Remember, black people, each one of your children are a unique being. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Just like you are, no matter how much you train your children, their feelings and beliefs will never mirror what you think they should. Your child life is not your second life. Your child life is not your second life. They have their own dreams and callings that they must respond to. Every being born on this planet has its own purpose, its own calling. You understand? The best thing parents can do is set them on that straight path. Set them on that righteous path. Give them the knowledge to sit. And you have to sit down and do an evaluation on yourself. You understand? Work on the pain that you carry. Work on the habits, the bad habits that you carry that you project on your children. We can't mold them into us. Let them be who they were created to be. Your job is to groom them so they can grow up to be God-fearing and righteous human beings. All these children being born today are special. That's why they need the right parenting to put the right keys into them now so they can grow and develop into their God-like state. So we can bring about a complete change on our planet. Do you understand? And in our universe, parents have to change for the better. We got to learn how to get through all of this trouble. Teach your children how to deal with pain. But first you got to teach yourself. Like the woman said, she's sitting in the room talking about her stress for the future, isolated her baby, 
took on the habits of her mother. You understand what I'm saying? Did a lot of yelling and stuff, so she changed. She started spanking her baby and didn't realize it until it got deep. This is the wrong method. She realized that I'm carrying this over from my parents. And I'm putting this on my child and just in a different form and a different way. But the results are still the same. It says, We're programmed to react based on the behavior we witness and the conditioned beliefs we accept from our own nurturing environment. Listen. We experience our first emotional relationship with our guardians and closest family members. And based on these interactions, we learn how to socialize with and relate to others. We learn how to react to our emotions, our desires, our wants, and needs based on what we experience in these close relationships. Do we not? Think about it. Family, friends, It says, we're innocent when we're born. Before we're taught about the world, world, we are free. Free from doubt, judgment, shame, expectation, and knowledge. Free to express our emotions unfiltered because we have no concept of the rule in which we will be trained to live. Bye. It says, the cycle of conditioning is moving at full speed. By the time you're a year old, listen, you go through a stage of confusion and self-doubt. During the first stage of conditioning, we acquire knowledge about how we should see and what we should believe. Listen. That's why the black nation is so backwards. We believe in this mystery, God. Understand? Now they're teaching us at an early age, it's all right. You understand? To bend over. It's all right to get a sex change. It's all right to be in the house with two women that's in love with one another, or vice versa, two men, and expect our children to come up normal. Or you teach him to accept this. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Black folk. It says, during the first stage of condition, we acquire knowledge about how we should see and what we should believe. We learn from the adults around us about who we are, what we should do, and how we should respond. Most times we're rejected when we disagree with adults. Don't they do that? And we learn to fear questioning what we're told to believe. Is that not right? Well, some of our parents, man, they so stuck on that white Jesus that they disown their own damn children that they start looking at something different or come up with a whole different belief system. Some of them actually get ostracized. You understand? And that they believe that which they consider to be true and right. And you can't tell them a damn thing. You understand? Some of us, all we do is lie to our children. We don't teach them to make their word burn. And to speak the truth regardless. It's all right to be finger popped. It's all right to get high. We sitting around drinking fifths, smoking, cursing, doing all the things we should let our children see in our behavior. But at the same time, we'll go right back and tell them not to do the stuff we do right in front of them. We're conditioned with a perception about how the world works and what ex what's expected of us. 
that when we fail to reflect the image of who we're told to be, we reject ourselves, do we not? Once the image of who we are and what we should be is created in our minds, we look outside ourselves to validate those images. If the outside world rejects us, we question who we are and work to adjust our behavior and belief to achieve the validation we seek. We are taught subconsciously during our conditioning that we need to behave and feel a certain way to get love and to be accepted. The cycle continues in adulthood where we reject our true selves in order to gain love and acceptance from all others. It's hard for us to love our true selves when we are constantly changing to gain acceptance and validation from others. Unconditional self-love will free you from the prison of seeking acceptance. Why do we believe, why do we believe our parents, society, leaders, teachers, and preachers have the answers for our lives? It's unrealistic to think we can protect our children from feeling pain even if we want to. If only we can get our children to think that we know they should, we can protect them and guide them through pain-free life if they could just listen to what we know to be true. Listen. They would save a lot of time and energy not going through the ups and downs themselves. We tend to want to protect them from the world in a crippling way. We want to take away their pain instead of teaching them to work through it. That's because we still haven't learned to work through, to work through our own pain, black people. And this is something that we have to do. If we want to produce good fruit, You got to go look in that mirror and reflect on yourself. First of all, start putting that love back into yourself. Quit living in the past and making that past your reality in the present. Our children are very intuitive. They know when you're carrying around all their pain. They can feel it. They know when you're taking your actions and your trauma and projecting it on them. And a lot of our children grow up if this is on a continuous basis disturbing themselves. Our children are going to seek love on the outside because they're not getting that attention that they need in the home, from their mother, or their father. That's why you find a lot of times grandmothers become so important in the family because they are a shower of that child with their love and at the same time they'll put their beliefs on them. My, my children, you know, they had a good grandmother. They got two. And she was a good grandmother. But uh, we didn't allow her to impose her beliefs on our children. Such as when holidays came up, you know, they weren't allowed to go to her house. She wanted to buy them gifts for Christmas. They weren't allowed to go over there and receive no gifts. I said, what we would do, we would wait till Kawanza come in. Now, y'all want to go get them gifts. But this ain't about celebrating so-called Jesus' birthday because he wasn't even born in December at all. Sometime in September. Understand what I'm saying? So we can correct all the problems that we have. We can correct them right there in the home. So when they come out that door, they're fully prepared to deal with this world 
to take charge of their folks and to take over. But we give our children the wrong knowledge. We teach them how to be slaves to their emotions. We teach them how to be slaves to the system. We want them to be just like us. No. I want you to take on my better qualities. But I want you to learn to be yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Be yourself. I got my twins. They laid back. They do their own thing. Sometimes they siblings will tell them y'all need to be more sociable. I tell them to be yourself. Be yourself. Because sometimes being good ain't enough. People want you to be the way they are. Damn. I don't even hear y'all curse. Y'all Muslims, you at peace. You carry yourself upright. You know how to care. You know how to share. You know how to work. Take care of yourself. So I'm not concerned with you going out, hanging out with a crowd of people. Because that's what your siblings might do. Well, that's their thing. Do your thing. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to change you the way I want you to be. No, be yourself. That's your gift. You understand what I'm saying? Even in the story of Yaku, when he was a little boy, they said Yaku was more of an introvert. And what he did was he would go inside his own mind and study himself. But he had such good energy, they said all the other children liked being around Yaku because he came up with a, a different ideology, a different way of thinking, and people were attracted to that. You understand? And they say that the thought process once upon a time before the Caucasian was brought into the world, it was just all peace. No lying, robbing, stealing, or murdering. No fornication, no adultery, no sinning. But Yaakov was studied and went in himself and understood that the guys or the scientists of that day and created a doctrine and a way of living, and this is what it produced. But he said he wanted to let the people know there is another way to live. But this is all that they knew. And this is a little boy at eight years old, playing with two pieces of metal, found out that other life attracts. You understand what I'm saying? So he said, I'm going to make a new man. And that's what he did. And you read in the Bible, they say there was war in heaven, but there was no war in heaven. And the reason they sent Yaku to the island of Pelon to fulfill prophecy, where they would be let alone for them to do their job. Understand what I'm saying? And he, was, he got married, I believe, was at 15. He was a school sweetheart. Understand what I'm saying? And they say the first child that they had came out brown because they were very very dark black people you understand so that's where the beginning of the rapping process started to take place and i say all that to say this there's power when you go inside yourself and practice that silence and talk to yourself you understand because all the answers on the inside but you can draw from that one mind in the universe. Our electromagnetic field reaches very far out into our environment. Your electromagnetic field is stronger than the Caucasian. Black people. So you direct the center of the creator yourself. So we got to go inside ourselves and start dealing with the issues that we have. I think parents should talk a little more to one another and have parental discussions on what they see within their children, within themselves, 
try to get more uh, understanding, more ideals, and learn more on how to develop your children into themselves. Not into you, but into themselves because they all were born and brought here to do a job. Not just go get a damn job in corporate America. Go to school. Get your so-called education. And get a damn job and live happily ever after with a dog, a house, and a white picket fence. When we born into a condition on this planet, that's getting ready to change. So you must become part of the change. You must affect change for the better. You know, it's a lot of power within a family. I've had a discussion with uh, Bunisa Kalima. Well, we have various discussions. And we was talking about how families should learn how to project. Say it again. If families would get on the same page and project positive, mental, spiritual energy into the universe and you see what you want. You can manifest it. It's more powerful when you do it collectively. And one of the keys was when the other life Muhammad said, if we unite, if the black nation unite, we can become more powerful than an atomic bomb overnight. Because all of this mental power Producing a certain vibration, a certain energy. And if you guide it and direct it, you understand? You can really reorder the atoms in your universe, in our universe. That's the power of the mind. And these are the type of lessons that we should be bringing into the home, instilling them into our children. We want them to be better. We want them to tap into their God-given abilities that sit in dormant because we waiting on that mystery God to do that what we can do for ourselves of good. And this can be used for evil because you see it being done now on our planet, black people. So we got to take charge of our post. Our post is ourselves. And all temple property in view. Look around you. Take charge of it. Quit letting somebody else dictate to you or who you are. And they know damn well it's not conducive to your nature. Let's raise gods on the planet. Because they come here, gods. But sometimes we end up producing devils. Because in the environment that we place our children in, and all the baggage and the luggage, when we have children at an early age, you don't know what you're doing. When you run off and leave your babies for a man, for a dope pipe, or for a career, you done left them with your, your grandmother, your mother. I know some brothers that got their daughter's children right now. Or they got up all across the damn country with some damn man. They ain't producing a damn thing, but you got babies. Wondering where they mom at. Or they father. Then when we get them up under our control, we producing a bunch of niggas. Because we carry that same mentality within ourselves. And we put it on our children. You won't introduce our children to the truth. You go on this fake belief system that you've been taught by your open enemy. That's why you see our children rejecting all of this information that a lot of our parents have been putting into their children. They don't want no part of them because they see the world in a different way. You understand what I'm saying? They are here to bring about a change. And you must produce and Give them the knowledge to affect their change. Sometimes you don't have to ask to pray on them. 
You understand what I'm saying? Teach the order of the proper handling of people in the home. Practice that art amongst yourselves, your wife or your woman. Practice the art on how to handle one another. You understand what I'm saying? Stop being so selfish all the time. It's not about me, my, and I. It's about we. It's about us on a collective basis. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's about the brotherhood. It's the sisterhood. You understand? We move together as one to get the job done to strive for freedom, justice and equality, and true liberation. We cannot continue to live up under the Caucasian because this house and this system is coming down. Look at it. Pay attention. And it was so embarrassing to see all of these people running out here voting and they had a damn thing on the table. They ain't worried about this crack of trouble. Worried about it for what? Whatever the will of Allah gonna be. You understand? That uh, what Allah's will take place on our planet now. War time. There will be no peace until the devil is gone. Raise your children up to serve humanity. Raise your children to strive to be upright. Teach your children what righteousness means. Be that example in the house. Be that example on our planet. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? We're not keeping hope alive. We are already alive. You're the direct descendant of the creator yourself. You have power. You're a force on our universe, in our universe. You understand? But you haven't been properly educated. Some of you have that, don't even have that desire to get the credit now. All we want to do is integrate. And every time they step on one of us, we want to cry about it. All these brothers have been out here being stepped on and sisters. But what are we doing? Because I always look for the solution. I say, well, hell, let's take it to the house. Let's take it to it and develop another generation. From this generation, it'll carry it down for the next 20 generations. You understand? Being taught and educated properly on how to overcome any and all obstacles. And you can't overcome them, circumvent them in. I tell you, black folk, black man, God. But the key is the family. You understand? And when all the people just to tell you to vote, you already got another thought. You already got another solution to the problem. Separation is the key. Let's develop our own economy, our own educational system. Yeah, we got to put more love back into ourselves, brothers and sisters. Y'all get a couple of dollars, think you done did something. Brothers and sisters, get a couple of dollars, you see the attitude change. You understand? You got some chump change. Let's get our damn planet back. You understand? That's what we should be working on. Why? Because the law says so. The law is here to take this whole planet down, bring in a whole new world. They'll be fighting in a few days. You understand? Trump then going to turn America upside down. All his henchmen, all them evil devils he got back in them. That's because they're looking for a way to get rid of us. But it ain't going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? Family is the key. Quit passing down all that trauma, and then talk about generational curse. Hmm. The only damn curse we got is the devil. That's in our damn way from being ourselves. But they, you know, in the past, they used to say the ancestors are the ones that they sinned. And they considered them to be the gods. Not the living, but those who had transitioned and ascended to another dimension or another level. 
whether it's right or wrong. I'm just putting it out there to say that was another way of thinking about who God was. Because people have been trying to find out who God was for trillions of years now. Once he hid himself from you and I. Based on our disobedience from that tribe of Shabbat. Understand what I'm saying? But let me get back to this parallel. I'm not going to hold you long tonight. I think if you really look at this subject, it's powerful. It says, it says, we cover their eyes to prevent them from seeing our struggle. But they can feel the energy of our pain anyway. We think our children don't know when we are unhappy. Of course they do. That's why they come up to you, walk up to you, and grab your hand, or, or they hug on your leg or something like that. Understand what I'm trying to say? Understand, children are very, very intuitive. If we smile at them when they see us, but children are very intuitive. They can feel our energy from how we speak and from the amount of time we can be present with them and see them for who they really are. Every life-changing event we experience with our children also shape their personalities. Our children learn everything from the way they observe the world around them. With each experience, they fill their minds with new information. We tell them everything we believe, and we express our knowledge as truth. Our parents did the same. They taught us everything they knew and believed it to be true. They gave us, they gave us expectations for life, and they taught us the rules of the game as their parents taught to them. You got to change the rules to the game now to get different results. A lot of those rules are obsolete today. Understand what I'm trying to tell you, black folk? You got to change, you got to change. That's the whole damn key. We got to change for the better. It says, at some point, you may have disagreed with some of the beliefs and expectations instilled in you. Perhaps you were inspired to take a different path than the one your parents thought you would or should take. Maybe the path was based on the belief you created as truth when you disagreed with the belief your parents tried to instill in you. Listen. You decide to malfunction from the original program and use a new software system instead. See, this happens all the time. What's wrong with my child? He ain't paying attention. He ain't listening. And she ain't listening. She becomes rebellious. There's a reason for that. Because they ain't buying into this. They're not buying into this way of life anymore. This way of life is the devil's way of life. Your children are born righteous. They come here righteous, upright. They don't even know what it is to tell a lie. They don't even know what it is to say a curse word. They don't even know what it is to just to doubt someone. You understand? What I'm saying, black folk? That's why it's such a pleasure sometimes to have babies around. Because they're so pure. They smile at what's good and frown at what they feel is not good. You understand what I'm saying? They come loving unconditional. You understand what I'm saying? We create their own belief system for them. So to let them and helping them to develop their own belief system on a righteous basis. Black man, black woman. As parents, we are always more willing to take credit when our children excel than when they fail. Isn't that right? It says, when I was a child, I believed my mother should be blamed for everything that went wrong in my life. I see people that have grown up, man, grown people, got their own damn children. They blaming their mama or their father. Understand? Still holding something against because they lack the understanding of life. She was the worst person who ever walked the earth. Or so I thought. I believe that she was so evil. She and. And Satan had sent each other text messages. 
In truth, my mother was just addicted to crack cocaine. Listen. And spent a great deal of her adult life chasing the high. She could never find. Despite this, we were very close. After all, she was the only parent I had at home. Due to her addiction, she would physically neglect and mentally abandon me through her behavior. I learned how to love and hate simultaneously. My relationship with her taught me rules about love and tolerance. I created so many beliefs about myself based on my dynamics of that relationship. I believed I was not worthy of love because she kept leaving me. I believe she hated her life and wanted to die. I believe I was unwanted and a burden to the people who looked after me when my mother wasn't there. Listen, all of this stuff. I accepted so many mostly negative beliefs about my mother and myself from the learned behavior and beliefs I perceived during my childhood. Listen, as I became an adult, which again was around the time I became a mother. I began to evaluate the people around me and confront them for not fulfilling the responsibility that I felt they had in my life. I sent each person close to me a letter addressing my thoughts about their behavior. And I advised them about what they should be doing. As you can guess, the response wasn't great, but I knew I was right because I was becoming a mother. I was now granted the mother wisdom through my womb. And I knew what everyone else should have been doing. I told my dad. He failed. But I blamed my mother for everything. She was the reason I had a baby so early. Listen, 15, 16, 17 years old. She was the reason I was not excelling in my academics. She was the reason I didn't have any money. If only she would have made better choices in my life. I would have made better choices in mine. Listen how all this go together. Listen how we all tie together as a family in our relationships. And how we have to be careful now on how we raise our children and what we introduce them to based on some of our failures that we have and how this is a carryover into their life. And like I said earlier, when you see your children slipping or tripping, that's a direct reflection on you and what you have brought into their lives and what they see and how they behave based on their environment. Since I had no money, if I stayed hungry, if I you don't go to school, you're worried about your mama, your daddy, you know, call him a failure, but you're supposed to be able to progress upon all these conditions. But the ones supposed to teach you how to go down that path of life have not even taken the right strides themselves on this path of life. So if you don't have that ability to deal with your pain, to go through that pain and get it off of you, then that generation, that child she says she getting ready to have, she going to put it on that baby. In some type of form or fashion. But the good thing about it is that she realized all of these things that took place within her environment as a child and how it carried over to affect her way of life. Even to the present. This is the black experience in America. Say it again. This is the black experience in America on parenting. This is why we must change black people. This is why I'm giving you this subject tonight. I'm going to the root. I'm going directly to that tree of life. These are solutions to our situation and our problems. You're in the audience that in the audience tonight. They're listening to this. Listen well. 
you're the key. Mother and father, brothers and sisters, you are the keys to affect change on this planet for the better. And you can take it either way. You can take it down or you can bring it up. You understand? Based on your mindset. Based on your morals, values, and principles. And the environment that we establish for our babies, we do not own them. We are just caretakers. Understand? You know what I'm saying? Black people tonight, let's get on our job. Quit worrying about every damn thing on our side of us. Quit worrying about all the current events. Quit worrying about corporate media news that they got on keeping us constantly evolving in chaos when you're not really sitting down and thinking with a clear mind or have an evil addition. It says, He said, if only she would have made better choices in her life, I would have made better choices in mine. She was responsible for the results of my life. I was sure of it. After all, she was the one who had passed down this blueprint for the way the life works. Why had she prepared me to deal with some of life's toughest battles? The truth is that we can only teach what we know. So true. And believe at the time. Our beliefs are passed down to us. And then we pass them down to our children. Looking back. How can I blame my mother for her suffering? She was in a deep. Listen. She was in a deep. Black experience. That had nothing to do with me. Even though I believed it. She was responsible for me. But having me did not make her wiser, right. Having me did not heal her addiction, right. When she became my mother, she was still the same person who had been able to heal her own pain. That's why she was on that damn crack. You understand? She didn't know how to deal with her own pain. How could she teach me to deal with my pain when she didn't know how to deal with it herself? Her intention was never to hurt me, but people who are hurting end up being the ones who inflict the most pain on those around them. That is so true. You find people in the family that's hurting, and they inflict the most pain on the ones that they, they truly love deep down inside, but that beast take over. Take over your whole being. And you project. All that pain, all that hurt, all that weakness, because you don't want to be there in the first place. But something keeps drawing you back. You understand? You know you ain't spent the money right, refrigerator empty, baby asks you for something to eat, you cussing them out. You ain't paying the bills in the home. Or the brother gets strung out. You done left the whole damn family for a hit, for a drink. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of learning how to overcome these things, because we're not taught any of this coming up. We just taught get a good job, education, everything supposed to be all right. That's not life. You understand? There's peaks and valleys in life. There's choices that we have to make in life based on the condition that we come up in. And a wise man learns from others' mistakes and a fool learns from his or her own black people. Understand what I'm trying to tell you tonight, black people? We're the keys to it all. All we do is call on God. God do this, God do that. I'd be God probably be saying, damn, I'm not your damn slave. But you treat me like a slave. All you want me to do is serve 
in you. But you're a direct descendant of the creator yourself. You understand? You're from that holy tribe of Shabazz. I gave you an ability to do for self. I gave you power and force. But I know your problem. Because you have not been nurtured properly by your open enemy, which is also God's enemy, black people. So this is why we fell with black people. We got to get our families back. That black man and black woman got to get back together. And we got to sit down. We got to sit down and tackle these hard issues with one another. You understand? We got to learn how to bring true love back into the equation. And the best way to do that is really is get your woman back on the square and let her be that expression of love to you in the home, in the community, in particular, her woman. We can make a better world, black people. That's our responsibility. You understand what I'm saying? These children do not belong to you at all. They were sent here through the womb of that divine black woman to reproduce God all over this planet. Understand? To bring his peace, love, and happiness back to our planet. I'm going to give you a little bit more. I'm going to let you go. Because there's a lot to this. It said, in retrospect, I can't believe how much in my life I spent agreeing with information that I didn't truly agree with simply for approval. I was afraid of judgment. It says, our children love us, and they want to please us. So they will disown their true nature to try and be who we are asking them to be. Listen to this. Our children love us, and they want to please us. So they will disown their true nature to try and be who we're asking them to be. When they're unhappy with us, they'll fix their face when we tell them the truth is we are selfish it's unloving to ask it's unloving to ask our children to be someone they are unable to be or to do something they are unable to do yet we need them to fix to fit into this world in a way that makes us feel better about ourselves we push our beliefs on our children most times with good intentions but our children's behavior is always a reflection of their perception of us. I wonder if we can learn to see our children separate from the vision of our own desires or what they should be. Would we then be open to learning more about ourselves and the world through the perception of our children? It says our parents never allowed us to be who we wanted to be. They sheltered us instead of preparing us to deal with the truth of life. They fixed our problems so we never learned to master the skills. Listen, is this why we feel resentment toward our parents? We blame them sometimes 50 years later for things that happened in our childhood. Just spoke on that. We cannot begin get beyond our perception of the experience. If I wouldn't have experienced that, this never would have happened. If you would have done this, this is what they be saying. I would be different. I blame them for the learned behaviors and beliefs we chose to repeat as adults. We blame them because we feel helpless in overcoming our mind's conditioning. They are not to blame. They are not to blame, though. Listen. They only did what was done to them. Now that you're aware of the ability to condition someone, 
You're responsible for acting more intentional with regards to the conditioning you pass to your own children, black folks. Now you're responsible. They ain't got damn thing to do with your parents no more. You understand? You got that doggone responsibility now, black people, to bring about a complete change. It's on us. We, we got to quit passing the buck. Let's go look in that mirror tonight. Look at them beautiful babies that we got in our homes. Now let's make a complete change, black people. You the guys of the universe. We know about the life in our universe on all the planets. You understand? Let me get you a little bit of this, and I'm going to close it out. Let me have a second. Let me take a look at something. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this life that these white boys be running their butt up to Mars and stuff. They said, It says, now, he's going up. Allah opened up the heavens as the Holy Quran teaches us and let him go up there and peep in. Then he will bring him down to the bottom of hell because he's not able to stay up there. He's not able to stay anywhere. He's talking about these white folks. Anywhere. Only where Allah permits him to stay. Then Allah takes him away from that at will. Anytime he wills, he takes anytime he will, he takes him away. The white man goes to the moon. Yeah, but what is the moon? It's our moon. He didn't find anything there that he made, did he? Hell no. We made it. We let him go and peep at it. Now he's making instruments to look at the civilization on Mars. I say civilization on Mars. Well, when he sees what's on Mars, he won't see no mark of life. It's our Mars, our people, so God has taught me. He didn't know they were there until a few days ago. He just found out he ain't telling y'all. He used to look at Mars and just call it a star, and that's all. But our father made it with intelligent, listen, beings like us. Listen, they walk on two feet or hide. They're not animals. They are intelligent people. The marks that we see on Mars are not from ignorant, silly, uncivilized people. They show signs of civilization. They look something similar to us. Not exactly, but they look similar. They walk on two feet and they're not white folks. Listen. They walk on two feet and they ain't white folks. That shows you and teaches you that we of this planet, the black man is the first. Since we don't find no planet coming out with a super civilization over us. There ain't nobody out there in our universe got a super civilization over us. You understand what I'm saying? You the best of the best. The Mars people, they have civilization, but it's not equal with ours. So God taught me. They are not our equals. We are their superiors. Listen. They are superior trying to live a long time over us. But this is because we got so much sense. We're crazy. That's right. We know too much. And are always experimenting to learn more. These people, these people, their nature teaches them to be satisfied with what they have. Been given by God called nature. So they live, so God taught me in the person of Master Rob Muhammad, 1,200 of our earth years. Listen. While we sit around thinking we're living sometime to get 50, that's right. Y'all old at 50. 
the hell if he is. We let to be 50 years old and think we have lived a long damn time. People living on Mars be 1,200 years old. You just made it five years old, man. But you're looking old before your time. You're looking unhealthy before your time. You broke down before your time. What's going on is the question. What I'm trying to do for you is get knowledge in your heads. I don't pretend to represent myself and you as a great no. No, I'm just a coming and unlearned as you in a way. Just as God himself chose me after he found me here among you. He chose me to help bring to you his own wisdom and knowledge. I'm trying to do that. I cannot boast of each other that we have more than you and I'm better than you. No, I can't do that. Never get on that kind of subject. We ain't better than each other. Some of us might gain more knowledge than others. Some of us might become more egotistical than others. Some of us might become more arrogant than others. Some of us might take on the way of the Caucasian and the way he thinks. The way we get a couple of dollars, we think we better than that brother or that sister that's still in the mood. Because you was able to get favor from the white man. Uh, so we start creating this classism. Brother, we all one. Created from that single cell, black people. The greatest being in our universe. Be that Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the creator of the planet Earth, God of the universe. That's you and I. Take over time. We have the ability to take our whole planet back. But let's start in the home. Teach uprightness, teach righteousness. Gather and learn more knowledge. Learn. This is the key. Learn to become the master of one. Self-discipline and self-control. Cut out all of those urges that's coming from the lower self. Tap into that God-like mind. You understand what I'm saying? We have that can keep you with a high level conversation. And I'm coming with high level understanding. Understand? Black folks, this subject is very important because it creates the complete the trinity, man, woman, and child. And it gives us the key to where we've been messing up at. Now you know, you can't say you didn't know. And now you know there's no more excuse. So it's been an honor and a pleasure to be before you tonight. It's always my honor and my pleasure to be a transit for Allah, for his words to come through me to give to you. So I don't know nothing. I'm just like that parrot. I just repeat. I'm not here for accolades from no one. Only favor and grace I'm striving to stay in is with Allah, the Mahdi. Because I know the time we live in and what's coming. And I know you, black people greatest beings in existence. You will be given the ability back to be creative. It's coming. It's already here. You understand? But it's going to get any more, even more profound. But we have to separate now and build a mighty, 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 mighty nation. 
righteous black people all across this planet and kill the devil and end. You understand? So thank you. Rasulullah Ali. And I say, I say, Muhammad. I say, Muhammad. I say, Muhammad got the devil on the run. Run, devil, run. Huh, two, three, four. Yes, that mighty, mighty, mighty army is on the move now. You're going to see an army of righteous black men and women raised up on this planet like none other. And all we're going to be tapping into is the power of the mighty. You understand what I'm saying? That's where our power is at. So thank you. Stay safe. Take heed to the words I gave you tonight. Let's raise the guys on our planet. Let your children find their purpose. You understand? Teach them who they are. That's the love of leader. And good night. Black people. War time. Law Wapa. Law Wapa. Law Wapa. Law Wapa. Okay.